Oh, are we just leaving a poster? I'm not stealing stuff from the hospital. Could you look at it? Some kind of motivational poster. Motivational poster. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't think so. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let us head back. Hopefully now the park will be open. Well, hopefully we can get to Nishanti. The park is, is always open. Hmm. Or maybe that's a completely separate thing and I've not actually solved anything by going there. I've not solved anything by going there. Okay. No. I can't do this. I just can't. I'll just have to wait until she's finished, or I don't know. I can't do this with all those people staring at me. Is there anything else on the screen? Doggy! I don't think so. I'm not untying- Ashanti would kill me, blah 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 blah. Hmm. A dog walk entrance, which there's nothing in there at the moment. The dog park is empty. There's no reason to go in there. I think I may have been stuck in this section before. And the last time I did this. Ah, oh, this is so frustrating. There's got to be something. Hmm. Where am I going to go, though? Like, I'm meandering off. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, let's go back to Rose's. The windows look into the lobby of the building. Yes. There are bars over the windows. I'm not getting in that way. You could bang on the windows and get someone's attention so that they that you come in. Hello again. Uh, state the facts. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. Hmm. Show proof. I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, maybe I have to go through all of these options. Because I think that might have been what broke it last time. I said I didn't go through every option. Appeal for sympathy. Please, I've had a really tough morning. I need to get home. Sorry, lady. Rules are rules. Threaten violence! Out of my way. I'm going in. I wouldn't do that. Why? Are you going to stop me? Me? No. But I've got a cell phone in my pocket with 911 programmed in. All I have to do is hit send and the cops will be here in five minutes. Are you serious? Totally serious. I don't believe this. Restate the obvious. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go all the way to the park? to look for a woman who might be there, Is there. And if she recognizes me, then, and only then, I'll be granted the privilege of entering my own home? That's pretty much it, yeah. This is really stupid. I'm not the one who forgot my ID. Okay. I'll be back. See you around. <sighs> there is no puzzly puzzle 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 entrance puzzle key puzzle clue answer solution Hmm. Hopefully. No. Ah. <laughs> I tie you up. Oh, for heaven's sake! Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. There we go. I thought there was something to do with the lamppost, and the lead has got entangled. They're all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? Oh, it's you! The lady next door! Yeah, hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No, Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. Uh, compliment the pooch. Yes, yes, doggies. That's a cute dog you've got. That's sound more convincing. Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. <coughs> anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. <coughs> Rosangela. <coughs> so you said. Oh, right. Um... Yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. 
Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see. He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Onwards. Homewards. Mm. Oh no, not again. Are you all right? I'm fine. I just need to get home. All right. Let's keep walking. <laughs> Actually, all right of someone who's like, no, you're not all right. You're not fine. Okay. If you insist. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rose Angela. She lives here. She does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Syrupy, sweet response. Ang is this angry? Oh, sarcastic. Of course. Sarcasm. Sarcasm. Well, now you're sure. And you must be so proud of yourself. Well... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes. Finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors, after all. Yeah, I guess. <coughs> Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Uh, surprised, uncertain. Uh, uh, polite. I'll think about it. No thinking needed. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Try to make a joke. Uh, try to make a joke. Oh. I have three great roommates. Oh? Me, myself, yes. and I. Um, their names are me, myself, and I. Yay. <laughs> um, it's a joke. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. They well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rose Angela's kind of a mouthful, you know? All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. Cut to uh, Nishanti Sharma talking to Moti. Oh, what a strange lady. Is there anything down here? No, okay. But I can look. I can go into this other door, can I? Hmm. Well, let's go into our flat. Home. Thank God. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Right. Uh, I can't remember if there's actually anything relevant here uh, that I can interact with. Teddy bear! Te Griff is fine where he is. Okay. That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. I've had him as long as I can remember. <laughs> He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. Oh. Photograph. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. Uh. It's me. I look scared out of my mind. I don't remember when this picture was taken, but I look about four or five years old. Auntie Lauren. She took care of me after my parents died. Mm -hmm. For most of my life, Auntie Lauren was a vegetable, slowly rotting away in a hospital bed. I don't remember what she was like before that. This picture is all I have to go by. Mm. Let's look at the rubbish. I don't need to take the trash out. It's not even full. Come, Pootar. Do some writing. <sighs> I am just feeling so uninspired today. Maybe tomorrow I'll fill up to it. But today, it's just not happening. Oh, can't not being able to do writing. You should go on uh, Varex's Iosia stream and be, try and be creative and stuff. They're fine where they are. What are they? Just some old book review clippings. Oh, right, yes, of course. Book reviews. Envelope. Looks like it's from Bellevue. Dear Lauren, so you've been at uh, New York 
NYU for two weeks now and have not called. I'm sure things are busy in the Big Apple, but don't forget the family you left behind. Things back home are well. Jack starts high school on Monday. Oh, this is for this is Oh, the 1960. Okay. Uh, Jack starts high school on Monday, so he's a bit nervous. You know how he gets. Make sure, be sure to write him a letter. He misses his big sitter. Is it big sitter? Big sister. I admit I'm still a bit nervous about your, you living in New York all by yourself. You're carrying guys D with you when you go out, like I asked. Oh, no, 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 no. I was reading that. I just... uh, you know me, just being a mum. Somebody has to. Keep your head on straight, kid, as your dad would say, and remember that you have a family back home that misses you. Love you, mum and dad and Jack. Hello, sis. Uh, 17th of October, so this is... A month and a half. I'm writing this on my new uh, St. Clair Model 15. Mum says that improving my handwriting is a lost cause, so she got me this. Keen, huh? I've you know, already typed up a few stories on it, and this letter can't mm, type for long because Dad says the noise drives him up the frigging wall. Mm. What does he know? So how is life in the big bad city? Troy is dead boring, as usual. Why would you have to go to college, huh? There's nobody to talk to in this dump anymore. See you at Thanksgiving, Jacko. Dear Lauren, 5th of December. Well, Thanksgiving... Oh my goodness, can you see? I'm going to have to... Oh, is that just scribbled out? I'm actually having to look at OBS to see what it says. Well, Thanksgiving... Scribble? Or is that here? Uh, Thanksgiving Scribble has come and gone and so have you. In just two short months, I can already see you evolving into a capable young woman. You have outgrown this small town, Lauren. That much is obvious. Jack will be following in your footsteps soon, I'm sure. Visiting you in New York is all he talks about. Speaking of Jack, I know you're worried about him. We all are, but don't feel that but don't feel that, that is your responsibility. You are his sister and you love him, but he's got to learn to live without you eventually. You're growing up. Let him grow up too. Till Christmas, love, Mum, and Dad, and Jack. Lauren, can you keep a secret? Well, this is a year later. I don't want to say this over the phone in case Mum or mm, Dad over here. Mum's been acting odd lately. It started a few days after you went back to New York. She was dragging me shopping when she suddenly screamed and fainted. She was pointing at the corner of the room, but there was nothing there. We brought her to the... Uh, hospital and she says she's fine now but she's been very on edge and paranoid it's hard to explain okay so what was it 20 years like so it's been 20 right okay let's try and work backwards on things it's 2006 and 25 years ago lauren had her attack so that's 81 and 20 years before that was uh it was yeah so that's this month so this is this is the attack. This is the hereditary dementia. Uh, Dad's no help. Can you call and try to cheer her up? She won't listen to me. Just don't tell her about this letter. I just hope she's okay. Jacko. Lauren, you seem concerned after, your la after our last phone call. I just wanted to write and reassure you that everything is F-I-N-E. Fine. Let us know when you're coming home again for Thanksgiving. With love, Mum and Dad and Jack. No one says they're fine, unless they're not. Dear sis, mum's getting worse. You said it best during Thanksgiving. It's like somebody is watching over her shoulder. Paranoia. Uh, okay. She sits by herself for hours, pretending to read when it's obvious she isn't. Lately, she's been covering her ears as if to keep out a sound and closing her eyes tight. Dad's losing patience with her. He's convinced she's lost her mind, and I'm starting to agree. She refuses to get any kind of help. Why can't she see that there is a problem? This isn't normal. Not normal at all. Why can't she see that? I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of scared. Scared for her. I don't know what to do. Jack. Lauren, it has a name. Mum locked herself in the bathroom this morning. She sounded like she was talking to herself in there. Well, not to herself. It was like there was somebody in, somebody else in there, but there wasn't. I listened. I couldn't understand it, but she did say the name. Joey. <gasps> dun dun dun. I asked her later who Joey was, and she got really scared. Then she got angry and said, If you know what's good for you, never mention that name again. 
This could be the key. If we find out who Joey is, maybe we can save her. Jack. So this is... Yeah, this is the February. So this is a few months later. Next month. Dear Lauren, well, it's done. The final papers have been signed. It hurt. A lot. But it had to be done. Mum has now been committed to a mental ward. I have to say, I I'm relieved. I know... I'm, I'm relieved. I know how you feel about it, but you weren't there. You didn't come home to see her screaming and tearing her hair out, running around the house, knocking down everything in her way. Cuts were all over her face, and the house was practically destroyed. I was so shocked, I just closed the door and waited outside for Dad to come home. It was awful. She clawed at him, clawed at his face, and drew blood. It will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. Thanks for coming out, Lauren. I don't think Dad and I could have handled it on our own. She kind of drained us, you know? Can I come to New York and visit? I need to get away for a while. Jack. Congratulations, Sumner cum laude. I always knew you were a smarty pants, sis. Now you've got the documentation to prove it. <laughs> Thanks again for letting me stay at your place for the week at weekend. It was just like old times, except you weren't smoking then. New York is an amazing city, and Columbia has a great campus. campus. I can't wait to move down there in September. But until then, I've got to deal with our grumpy old man. He's insufferable as always. Ever since mum, he's been hard to talk to and very hard on me. I should tell him you're smoking now. Maybe then he'll concentrate on you for once. <laughs> See you again soon, Jack. It's happened, L Lauren, just like you eventually said it would. I'm in love. Her name is Maria. She's from Italy and we met in statistics class. Hey, a mathematician. She asked if she could copy my notes because her hand was tired. We ended up having lunch and we've been inseparable ever since. She's incredible. She's got the most amazing red hair, and I want you to meet her. I'll come by soon, Jack. So, I sh so yeah, of, of course, Jack's our dad, and obviously Maria is our mum. Lauren, are you alright? Ever since mum's funeral, you've been hard to reach. I know it's been hard on us, but it's been six months. I tried calling, but you never answer. I came by the other day, but you didn't open the door. I knew you were there, Lauren. I could hear you. I risked using the spare key you gave me, but you changed the lock. Come for dinner on Christmas Eve. Maria's a great cook. We won't ask any questions, just come. Mum might be gone, but we're still here. I miss my big sister. Jack. Lauren, uh, who is Joey? I went over last week to give you a Christmas gift. You didn't answer the door, but I heard you talking to someone named Joey. This is... Uh, no, this is wrong. This is a decade out. This is a decade... Oh, this is... Is it a boyfriend? Are you seeing a man named Joey? Is that why you've dropped off the map? Or is it something else? I don't think I need to tell you what. Yeah, yeah, referencing back. Yeah, talk to me, Jack. No, this is this is a decade out. This can't be right. This is... Because if this is the case... Like, she's... Like, so... Lauren's just died, and she was in that hospital for 25 years. So, unless they've not had her committed for 10 years, unless no one, yeah, no one's committed Lauren for 10 years. Alright, how long, how long did it take for them to commit, put, make, have her committed? 62. Uh, uh, so 62, it's like, it's half, it's half a year. It took half a year and now Lauren's committed 10 years? Hmm. I'm guessing a slight, kind of get it slightly, got it, got it slightly wrong on the dates. Oh yeah, because well, of course, yeah, because she shouldn't have. Yeah, no, this is wrong because they, because Jack should, because from what Rosa said before, her parents were dead. So that means Jack and Maria should would be dead before Lauren started seeing, but started, started um, having this. Lauren, I know you're annoyed, but I'm not sorry. I didn't want to do it, but you left me no choice. Hiring a private detective to follow you was the only option left. <laughs> uh, he told me some odd things. You won't talk to me, but you'll talk to total strangers. You'll go to every far corner of the city at the strangest hour, and you talk to yourself when you think you're alone. Don't deny it. He heard it, and so did I. Not that any of it makes any sense. That alone is disturbing. That's disturbing enough, but then he saw you collapse. You were all alone in some obscure park in the Bronx when you just fainted. He was about to call an ambulance, but then he saw you get up again and walk off like nothing happened. You're always there for me growing up. Don't shut me out, sis. Let me be there for you now, Jack. Jacko, 
Please stay away. Don't worry about me. There are things that need to be done, and I'm the only one who can do them. Don't ask me to explain. All I can say is that I understand our mother more than ever. She was never crazy, Jacko. Trust me on this and take some comfort in it. You've grown up and you've grown tough and you don't need anyone to fight your battles anymore. You don't need me, but I'll always be your big sister. Lauren. So she didn't send that then. Okay, I'm returning your letter because I refuse to accept it. No, you don't need to fight my battles. I'm not 14 years old anymore, but we are still family and that is important. Especially now that Dad has died. Look, you obviously have something going on, and that's fine. I don't have to be involved if you don't want me to, but I still want you involved in my life. Marie and I are getting married in November. You are you are coming! No stupid excuses, Jack. There will be enjoyment by order. Greetings from Greece! If there are any words to describe the beauty of this place, it still wouldn't do it justice. Perfect spot for a honeymoon. Things have been busy, as you can imagine, but I wanted to quickly write to say that I'm glad you made the wedding. Of course, I'm still worried about you, but somebody has to be. <laughs> you take care and stay in touch. Maria says hi, Jack. There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. Cool. Dear Aunt Lauren. Yes! Aunt Lauren. You're an aunt. I'm a dad. Maria gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. We named her Rosangela. After Maria's grandmother. Okay, so there's a reason for it. She's so quiet, she hardly cries at all. I'm all set to spoil her rotten, but Maria says to take it easy. She looks just like her mother, and there's a bit of you in her eyes too. And mum. And dad. Everything our family was or will be, this child is it. Life is changing so fast. I, I just want to hold on to this tiny creature and never let go. The future is an exciting place, and I have everything I could ever want. I don't want anything to change. Ever. Jack. The Law Offices of, Dun of Durkin and Goldberg, 21st of April 1981. Dear Miss Blackwell, it is indeed within your legal rights to take custody, cu custody of your five-year-old niece with the death of her parents. You are the only living relative. Please contact our office and we will start the necessary paperwork. Sincerely, John Durkin. How do I get these pictures? Do I have pictures? 